Happy holidays and welcome to the Roll for Create holiday gift guide in which the two of us will be giving you our expert board game opinions on what you should be buying for your friends and family this year for Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever. I'm Jonathan Estes. And I'm Will Keeler. This is, we'll focus mostly on games that came out this year. There are always, of course, games that have been around forever that you can always look at, such as Pandemic, Ticket to Ride, but we thought you want to know the new hot stuff. That's right, we're giving you only the new hotness, so if you know someone who is a board game fanatic, they won't be upset that you got them the old and busted. <laughs> we're giving you the new hotness. Now, we've se separated it into three categories for your friends who are on the lighter side of gamers, the medium, and the heavy. Mm -hmm. pretty, pretty obvious, you should be able to know, but we'll walk you through it. Uh, so let's start out with these lighter games that will be perfect for family members, friends, a party, group gatherings, people who honestly, for the most part, could have never played a game before and will probably be able to get into these. Right, a lot of these will probably be more like almost social mm -hmm. events than actually a game itself. Yeah. Not that that's a bad thing. And I think we go, let's start right out the gate with one of your favorites from Gen Con. That's right, uh, Crossfire from Plaid Hat Games, which is based in their Spectre Ops universe, but you don't need to know anything about that. <laughs> Basically, it's a, a hidden game where everyone has a secret card that tells them what they want to do. And most of the game is, is, like you said, just a social interaction where you're talking to each other. And at some point at the end, once the timer runs out, everyone's going to have to point at someone else and choose to either sh to shoot them, or you might you might be trying to protect a certain person, or get a certain person killed. So there's all kinds of head games and mind games that you're playing. And what how this stands out from Resistance or Resistance Avalon is first off when you get your rolls, you'll actually be shuffling them around, so you'll actually know that the maybe the target that needs to be killed is somewhere between, next to you, or it's not, and things like that. As well as you have only about two or three minutes to do the argument. So you can actually get fit like five games in under like an hour, under 30 minutes, I mean. Very, very fast paced, very easy to play. Uh, it does require at least five players, so better for groups, but it goes up to 10. So really good if you have big family parties or that kind of a thing. Yeah, and our experience was hilarious because we had people just going, you know what, I'm the bystander, so uh, <laughs> don't kill me. Yeah, you can lie, you can make up what you're doing. It's great. Yeah. Uh, we love games like that. But uh, moving on, one of the most popular games that come out was Code Names in the last few years, and they just released Code Names pictures of both Marvel and Disney. This is a really great one, especially if younger kids, because the pictures make it a lot easier. They're not abstract, they're literally just like, here's a picture of like uh, Captain America's shield, here's a picture of of, you know, Mickey Mouse, so it's a little bit easier and less abstract. It might be like a sun with a frying pan in the original picture. Yeah, if you're not familiar, Codenames is a word guessing game where uh, one person is giving clues only one word at a time, and the other team or player has to try and guess which pictures or words they're alluding to. And as you said, the fact that a Disney and Marvel theme now is is perfect for anyone who's who's not into board games who likes those properties because almost everybody likes one of those two properties at least, and it is a super fun, very easygoing party game with that uh, does have a good amount of depth, even if you are a, a heavier gamer, yeah, as most of these do. And the other fun thing is, if you know someone who already has maybe the base pictures, you can get these and mix them all together and have some really weird, fun sort of yeah. possible uh, ma hidden maps, I guess. You could combine them together. You could have a Marvel-Disney mashup. So Disney. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <laughs> Disney. Uh, and we got another suggestion from the same company, Check Games, mm -hmm. which is, that's a question. Actually, the two Codenames versions are being put up by USAopoly, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, that's a question is a party game, again, where you are asking questions of each other. Uh, they're going to be between three categories where you're going to be making a choice of two options. So the question might be, uh, what would you rather live without? What could you see erased from the world forever and still be happy? And the options might be pizza, or TV, yeah, and everyone else has to guess what the person who's being asked the question is going to say. Yeah, this falls a lot like when you're thinking of like apples to apples or cards when you're trying to, when that person's the judge. But unlike those where you can maybe have a bad hand or just because you happen to have the good card that make that judge laugh, you'd win. You actually everyone has the, in essence the same chance of just depending what do you think you would prefer as an answer. Yeah, knowing the person can be a lot more beneficial than, you don't actually need to know anything, you know what I mean, in terms of trivia or anything like that. And you, and you have a lot of options in your hand. You're making up, well, you're not making up, but you're choosing between what the two options will be. So there's a lot of variation no matter how many times you can play it. And of course, you'll have moments when you're playing this like, 
Really? Like, which would you rather live without? Like, if there's two options and the person chooses that, you're like, how could you live without pizza? <laughs> right. <laughs> Lots of fun. Like, this game is guaranteed to make you laugh and r really good for, for friends or family gathering. Plus, it has a squirrel on it. Yeah, it does. But moving on to another great light game that we just got is Werewords. Now, this game is based off of the whole werewolf franchise. But in this one, the mayor knows a secret word that will banish the werewolves. However, he can't talk. So it's up to everyone else to ask him yes and no questions to try to find out what the word is. This is a spookier version of a game for your, for your holiday gatherings, perhaps. Uh, but very, very fun if you, again, perfect for new gamers. If you like 20 questions, <laughs> if you like Werewolf, this is a great choice. It is super simple. It uses an app, which is also kind of fun, and which helps you, it walks you right through it. And uh, I'm pretty sure it has music that it plays, right? At least they're yeah, in the Well, the, it, it does have like the, uh, everyone, heads down, werewolves, look up. Right, so that's, that's always fun to have a shiny little thing on the, the table. The other cool thing is, obviously, it gives you an easy, medium, hard, or I think there's a really hard level, I forget what they yeah, use. Yeah, uh, ridiculous. Which gives you then three options of words to use. But let's say you and your group, like, we really want to make a list like this. Like, let's say maybe for sake of uh, all Pokemon names or something. You can make your own lists, <laughs> yeah. or dirtier ones if that may be. So you can have a lot of customization there to really make a very silly game. And I know they just uh, they added recently other people's lists, so you can actually download them and browse them, so you don't even need to make your own. Someone else might have made that Pokemon list already. That's true. So uh, that's, that's a really fun choice. For the fan of television in your life, there's always licensed games, and we're gonna cover a few in this list, Uh huh. but in general right now, of course, the big hot property, I'd say, is Rick and Morty. Oh, yes. And there are a few Rick and Morty games that you have a choice to buy for the Rick and Morty fan in yes. your life. But two have recently come out. Mm -hmm. uh, Anatomy Park mm -hmm. and the... Total... Well, no. To, what's, yeah, Total what, Recall. Total Recall, yeah. Uh, the Cryptozoic Deck Building Game. Right. The, so Well, no, the deck building the game, game is r r Close Rick Counters. Oh, yeah, I mixed it up, yes. <laughs> Tol close Rick Counters of the Rick kind. That's right. Yeah. There's a lot of them. <laughs> but uh, the two new ones, Anatomy Park and that one, and the deck building. Deck building, if you've played the DC deck building or the Attack on Titan, the Street Fighter, it's that. Uh, we played it. It was very interesting, a little quicker than I th compared to the other ones I felt, or at least that game. Mm -hmm. uh, but still a lot of fun. with your, It's your deck builder, so definitely good for early on. Most people can get into deck builder quick. Uh, the other one just is based on the Anatomy Park episode. But, yeah. yeah, it seems that they decided to just focus on each episode. Mm -hmm. But oddly enough, any I'm guessing any of the Rick and Morty games, if you have a, someone who's a fan of Rick and Morty, they'll be happy with what they get. They'll get some kind of kick out of it. I, mean, I, th I think Total Rickall, which just came out last year, is the one that we probably could recommend the most that we that we liked uh, the most. If you want to, it's another social deduction party game. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Rick and Morty. Always a good choice. Uh, and uh, along those lines of a bunch of different games that you can mm -hmm. <laughs> buy that you'll be happy with, the other new hotness right now yep. is escape rooms. Yes, uh, escape rooms have become a big thing in the real world of the actual going to a place or room, but there are plenty now of small box you can spend for about usually about $15 or so. Mm -hmm. uh, exit, unlock. Yeah. I think there's a third one I'm forgetting. There's Escape Room, the game. We actually right. did a whole episode about rank, kind of ranking these escape rooms. So you can find it on our channel. Uh, but Unlock or Exit are two great choices. Exit was actually up for the Kenosh Bildiaras. It won it. Oh, it did won it this year. Mm -hmm. I always forget who wins and who loses. <laughs> and both of them have come out with a lot of new ones since our review. These are, these are perfect, great uh, gatherings for a one-time thing, but it's going to be a memorable experience for the people that are at your party. So that's a really good choice. And like we said, small, compact, cheap. And uh, finally, we're going to finish off with King Domino, the other winner of the uh, Shield DRs. That's right. Uh, this game we have played a lot. I've really enjoyed it. I haven't played Queen Domino, which is their new version that came out. Mm -hmm. But in a, it's a quick, light game, easy for the family. You can play it with pretty much anyone of this fun tile laying experience and you get to make this fun little kingdom which you actually made a perfect square on yeah. your first try. I, I, I aced it. <laughs> uh, which is why I'm never playing that game again. But yeah, this is a really good, uh, this is probably the gamiest game on our list. For um, the light? Uh, yeah, for, of the lighter category. Uh, so, you know, if you, if you want to, but don't let that scare you off if it does. It's still very light, but uh, it's, it's less about social deduction. You're gathering tiles, you're choosing where to place them, but still a very fun game. And if you like it, you can go try Queen Domino and maybe uh, put them together and come up with something. But 
that doesn't mean the other nominees weren't uh, bad at all. In fact, they're on our list for medium, That's which we're right. going to move on to now. That's right. <laughs> so our first one we're going to talk about is Magic Maze. That's yeah. actually the first of the three we actually played. Yeah. This one is honestly, when looking at all three, we're both say that we wouldn't be disagreeing that this could have won it. Yeah, like we thought this was really good. I think honestly it was the tutorial that screwed it up. It was definitely my favorite of the three. And I cannot disagree. It's a game where you are working together to move four pawns to certain objectives then have them escape the mall. You can't talk at all, though. So it's all this trying to note, listen, like signal to each other and try to move around and try to all sync up. And, of course, there's only that one person who's not, so everyone's like... <laughs> yeah, very uh, funny situations. There's there's a timer that comes into play, so you're you're, you're there's pressure, but not too much pressure, uh, and it's very colorful. The theme is goofy and silly and fun. Definitely recommend Magic Maze. The other, the third and final Spiel the Aras nominee was the Quest for El Dorado, which is very interesting. It's it is a deck building game again, but with a twist where you're you have a board as well, and you're using the cards in your hand for your movements in addition to buying new cards to put in your deck. And the theme is that you're trying to it's a race to see who can get to the end of the board first before anybody else. Yeah, we only just recently got a chance to play this. We did have a, a lot of fun. It was definitely interesting, especially with how the lineup works compared to other deck building games, mm -hmm. uh, which is definitely, if, once again, deck building games are always a good suggestion from my point of view because if you've played one, it's really easy to get into the other one for someone who maybe likes board games, is a little hesitant. Yeah, this one was very interesting. There's definitely, it definitely changes up kind of the way you think about movement and how to play your cards because you can only use certain cards to move into certain spaces so there's a, a kind of a puzzle aspect to it you're trying to decide what order to play things in very fun very interesting the board is also modular yeah. so it's not always going to be the same way so you won't know i always need to go in this order of buying stuff uh and i do feel we're in agreement that for a lot of deck building games this actually is probably the future they need to go it's not just simply a deck building game but a board like Mage Knight as well mm -hmm. attached to it. So yeah, that really it, it adds another component to it that really makes things interesting, for sure. But uh, going on, if you want to do more 1v1 combat, uh, Star Wars Destiny, which is a game that has come out before with packs, this is more of a trading card game idea, mm -hmm. except with dice, did release the new Star Wars Destiny two-player game. I believe is the full name of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a real catchy title. <laughs> so this is a box that comes with everything you need to play for two players, so it's a perfect option to, to get for somebody they won't have to go out and buy any more packs unless they really want to. It's all self-contained in there. And if you like Star Wars, it's got stuff from the new Star Wars movies, stuff from the old Star Wars movies. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're familiar with any game or, like Magic or Dice Masters, it's along those lines. It's, like you said, head-to-head -head collectible card game. Uh, on another sort of cool fun note, there is, I believe it's not out yet, but they actually are making binders. So if you want to bring set up your deck and stuff, that will hold up the dice and cards. There you which go. Which is pretty cool. There you go. It does have big dice that are fun to roll. <laughs> yes. Speaking of big dice. Oh, yeah. I'd love to. Uh, Attack on Titan, The Last Stand. We actually just recently talked about this yeah. in our episode. This is a great 1v all game that's light but still had a lot of interesting mechanics. It's a push-your-luck game for pretty much the... Not the hunters, I think they're called. Mm -hmm. uh, while the Titan pretty much is the one who reaps the rewards of the pushing your or of the bad push your luck. Of course, based on the anime Attack on Titan. So if you know somebody who loves anime, they probably like this game. In addition, because the board's vertical, it's just one of those things that looks. You put it on the table, and everyone's gonna be like, "What is that?" Yeah, it has a really cool 3D centerpiece, and that's how you're moving around with your pieces. Very unique, fun game. This is also a pretty cheap one that you can that you can mm -hmm. pick up, and definitely, definitely in the in the medium camp. But you can kind of push it towards lighter, even too. It's most of these mediums are well, they're not heavy. That's all I'll say. But uh, <laughs> if you have been into board games, odds are you've heard of uh, Betrayal House at the Hill. Yeah. Well, they have made a new version that's based on the D&D &D franchise called Betrayal at Baldur's Gate. That's Dungeons and Dragons, if you don't know. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you, know, you might not know. No, uh, no, I, I, I should have. <laughs> yeah, the original uh, Betrayal at House on the Hill is a tiling game where you're in a haunted house. This one is basically the same thing, only it's just themed with wizards and dragons and all that kind of thing. Uh, and this is a really good party game. 
that, if, again, it has more gamey elements to it with lots of replay value because every time you play, there's going to be a different scenario that is can often be like playing an entirely different game. Uh, and depending on who you are, your role, you might end up being a traitor in the group, so you're fighting each other. In the beginning, you're working together. So this is also a great one to kind of introduce people to co-op elements versus uh, competitive elements, etc. If you like either one of those sounding things, this is definitely a good one to check out. Betrayal, I feel like, is a classic gateway game where p even people who don't like board games can really get into get into the flavor of it. Yes, um, but, but probably for a D and D fan more so this version. Yes, but finally, I think it's time we jumped into the deep end. That's right. These are some of our more heavier games, but ones we've definitely enjoyed a lot of. Sorry. So first off, uh, the really hot item in the last two years was yeah. Pandemic Legacy Season One. Now this is probably people would argue the lighter of our few heavy suggestions, <laughs> Pandemic. But because of the legacy aspect, it really changes things up. Yeah. And season two does make things completely different. Instead of the usual, similar to Pandemic, sort of going around the earth and making sure disease doesn't spread, you lost. <laughs> the world separated, it's sort of, you've, everyone went into these secret havens, mm -hmm. and now you're actually going to be exploring the world, and as well as trying to get supplies around. So you'll be putting stickers on those to rebuild the map of the world. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with legacy games, what that means is that the game will actually change as you play. Literally, the board and cards will change. Sometimes you need to rip cards up and get rid of them. And so it's encouraged to have the same group of people to play through each session. And so if you know someone who has a good gaming group like that, I mean, this is the hot thing. Everybody is talking about this game. You don't want to miss out on it. Super fun. I mean, the original, I think, is still ranked number one on BoardGameGeek.com currently, so you know you're going to get a good thing. And in case you're wondering, there's different colors, but there's no difference between the versions of colors. It's just season one and season two are the two different ones. Well, also, and you don't each, need to play. each season also has two different colors that are just simply, if you want, right, that's what two I mean. different play groups. But you don't, this, you don't need to play the seasons in order either, so either season could work. Right. And this would not be a suggested tabletop gift guide without an RPG. Mm -hmm. And luckily, we have a great one for you. Mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. Pathfinder series has been an extremely popular R uh, RPG that split off from D uh, Dungeons & Dragons a little while ago. Mm -hmm. And they have finally made Starfinder, which is the sort of futuristic sci-fi version of the Pathfinder game. Yep. The core set only came out with the Alien Archive, which pretty much is the bestiary, but as well as also tells you what races the players can play as. And this is really cool because, I mean, if you like Star Wars or anything, this is the per perfect game to get into because you know there's going to be a lot of support for this. Yeah, if I mean, if you like role-playing, if you have ever played Pathfinder, it's that, but with science fiction elements. There's, Like you said, there's already... Uh, that uh, bestiary plus a couple of uh, uh, adventure paths that are available right now. For but it. what's nice is it only just started, so you don't have to feel like jumping. I know for me, like sometimes when I see like Pathfinder, it's like there's already like 50 books out. How am I going to jump in? There's only, if you ignore the uh, already pre made adventure packs, there's pretty much two books. So you, can, you can get someone the complete collection for this yeah. holiday season if you, if you want to. Uh, so that's, that's really good. RPGs, another, another kind of a new hotness is another three letter. Uh, category, LCGs, mm -hmm. uh, which are living card games, which are a lot like collectible card games, but you don't need to buy random packs. They come in preset boxes, which is convenient. Fantasy Flight has put out their latest, which is based on the Legend of the Five Rings, and guess what? It's called Legend of the Five Rings. Uh, it's a head-to-head -head game, 1v1. You've played a little bit of it. Yes. It, if you don't know, Legend of the Five Rings is sort of a Japanese-era, uh, feudal Japan era, based on that kind of mythology. Mythology. Uh, you have different houses, and you'll build your deck based on one of the houses. And to do so, then when you play against your opponent, of course, they have their own house, is you try to protect your honor and your providences. And you have to, you could lose either way depending on that. So depending on how your deck's built, maybe you're more of a defender, which is my, how my first deck went, or you try to make your opponent dishonorable, which is how my opponent played. And it's really interesting mechanics compared to other games, because you actually put when you pay for a uh, character to fight with, mm -hmm. you actually are not just playing to play them like you think in Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh. You're paying for also how many turns they're around because they might then get called off and stuff. So there's definitely this whole aspect of how I can, I can pay two to play them, but I really like this character, so maybe I'll pay two more so they're around for two more rounds. There's an interesting kind of economical system there. Yeah, yeah. so it becomes, because there's also, in essence, three different ways to lose or win. 
it becomes this whole back and forth of how, like, can I counter this if I'm against this winning strategy? Like, I didn't prepare for the honor strategy. Uh, so I lost to there. And there's this is another one like Starfinder that's just fresh out of the gate. So again, you don't have to worry too much about trying to go for, through the back catalog mm -hmm. and getting all the packs and things like that. And there's a, a, a lot of variability. There's a bunch of those different houses in there. So if you if you like to do the collecting and sorting and building of cards and decks, that's very much in the DNA of the yeah, game. Yeah, and... I should note that, because this was based on old actual collectible card game, there are two houses that haven't been printed yet. Oh. So that you know that you're going to get a lot more when it, or when oh, it yeah. more comes this out. This will be the gift that keeps on giving. This will be stocking stuffers for years to come if, if they enjoy this. And of course, I personally love the fact that it's not random. That's always a big uh, plus for me. Absolutely. But finally, this is a game that really loved, really need to play more of, uh, Spirit Island. This yeah. comes from us greater than games. In essence, you are playing the spirits on an island that is invaded uh, by explorers, and you want them out. <laughs> yeah, and y this, is def this is a fully cooperative game. You're all working together, which helps. But it is very complex. There are a lot of decisions that need to be made. You are moving your pieces around a map. You're, you're creating fear tokens, which generate uh, more power for you to help you destroy the invaders and win the game ultimately. There's a lot going on. Yeah, usually a lot of games present a, here's a basic startup for your first game, understand it? We usually skip that at this point. We couldn't for this one. There's <laughs> so much to do. And that's a good thing though, because you have all these fun options and then you, when you're all working together, it's because there's also so much, if you have that guy who's an alpha gamer, it's very hard to alpha game because you, he can't know everything. Yeah, so this is that this definitely lies firmly in that heavy category, but the, it has a great theme, fun, colorful artwork, and it, it it is definitely one of the hottest new games that like everybody's been talking about since it came out. And so the, very good pick. Yeah, and the modularness of it is amazing. I mean, the island can be different. Uh, you all, there's I forgot how many spirits they get, let you play as, which you have all built differently. So maybe you're more on the fear generator or defending. You can even, like the invaders can be like, well, they can be from England. I think Sweden are the two that come in the core. Yeah. But I love the fact that they actually have that more historical, like pulling from the countries that did do all the conquering and, and exploring. Yeah, there's already uh, one expansion and I'm sure more on the way. So uh, always, you know, you know that it's, you know, it's got some bang built in for your buck, mm -hmm. which is a real phrase that people say. So those, that's our entire list. I mean, it's a, it's a really good one. We'll, uh, I'll, we'll put, I'll make up a link so you can actually see a list of these games if you forgot any of the ones that we mentioned in the description below. Of course, a great place that you can purchase all of these games mm -hmm. is our own website, rollforcrit.com. Right now we're running a bunch of sales on a bunch of items for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and all, basically all through Christmas and et cetera. Yeah, we want you to be able to get some great gifts this season. Yeah, so uh, definitely look there first. We're biased, but <laughs> trust us, it's, they're really good prices. Look at it. Uh, and if you can't find it there, if it's sold out, well, you know, then look elsewhere, I guess. But we'll, we'll try to help you out first. So if you have any other suggestions, if you have a gift that you're getting someone that we didn't talk about or something that you really think is a great pick for this holiday season, definitely post it in the comments below and, and give us a shout out because we're curious to hear all that kind of stuff from you. Uh, in the meantime, if you like this video, you can subscribe. You can literally like it mm -hmm. <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, wherever you want to go. Anywhere else they can catch us? or what's... Underneath the Christmas tree. That's right. Underneath the Christmas tree, in your Hanukkah bush, <laughs> or uh, perhaps behind the Kwanzaa candles. <laughs> but until then, I'm Will Keeler. I'm Jonathan Estes, and this has been Roll for Crit.